Los Angeles has remained a fixture in the business side of the NFL, despite the rotating carousel of franchises that have come and gone from the City of Angels. Anytime an owner wanted something from the franchise's city for their stadium, they would leverage the tantalizing opportunity to move their team to Los Angeles. Because Los Angeles has always been such a powerful market, the owners were able to use the prospects of a westward move to hardball the local politicians into corralling enough tax dollars for whatever renovations that they felt their stadium needed. Like when Colts owner Jim Ursay kept his airplane at the nearby Van Nuys Airport in plain sight to signal that he was having meetings with local officials about moving the Colts to LA. Sure, it was probably just posturing, but Indianapolis wasn't risking it, and they signed a deal to help Ursay and the Colts build a new stadium venue in Indy shortly after. Dan Kroenke, the owner of the Rams franchise, was no different. He had been feuding with the city of St. Louis for some time over the state of the Edward Jones Dome, the Rams' home stadium. The tension between the franchise and the city actually stemmed from negotiations between the city and the previous ownership group that was headed by Georgia Frontier. The deal was designed to position the Edward Jones Dome as one of the top 25% of stadiums in the league in terms of luxury boxes, amenities, and overall fan experience. In the subsequent years, the city of St. Louis did make changes to the stadium scoreboard and installed modern windows in lieu of the antiquated paneling to increase the natural lighting along with other band-aid-type solutions to the outdated stadium. The minor renovations, which totaled about $70 million, did not bring the stadium within the specifications required under the new lease agreement, thus keeping the dome in a state of uncertainty and putting the relationship between the franchise and the city on rocky terms. In 2013, an arbitrator ruled in favor of the Rams after it found that the Edward Jones Dome was definitely not in the top 25% of the NFL venues per the lease agreement, and they deemed the Rams' request for what was estimated to be $700 million in renovations was perfectly reasonable given the terms of the agreement. The panel went as far as demanding that the city pay $2 million for the Rams' attorney fees. The city and state officials spoke out against the ruling publicly, expressing absolutely zero interest in providing further funding to the Edward Jones Dome or any of the entities associated with it. Instead, they opted to proceed delinquently on nearly $300 million worth of funding. At this point, the relationship between the ownership group and the city really started to sour. The next day, the Los Angeles Times reported that Stan Kroenke's company, Kroenke Sports and Entertainment, partnered with Stockbridge Capital Group to develop a state-of-the-art NFL stadium on his Inglewood property. This news came just a little more than a year after the Los Angeles Times and the St. Louis Post Dispatch reported that Kroenke had purchased a plot of land in Inglewood a decision that drew a lot of ire from the powers that be in St. Louis. On January 4, 2016, Stan Kroenke, the owner of the St. Louis Rams, filed for relocation, devastating the dedicated fan base that had been cultivating in St. Louis since the team arrived in 1995. They were among the three teams, including the Oakland Raiders and the San Diego Chargers, that filed for relocation to move to the Los Angeles area for the 2016 NFL season. Interestingly, all three of the franchises had actually already given playing in the LA area a go before. A week after the teams filed for relocation, the NFL owners gathered in Houston for a now infamous meeting that was meant to determine the geographic fate of the franchises. One NFL owner called the meeting a shit show. A nightmare, another said. A third described it as the most contentious and polarizing in decades. Picture the absolute chaos that all the rich old owners were causing in that room, in part due to the fact that there were multiple proposals flying around the room. Kroenke was determined to build the world's most expensive stadium, a $2.7 billion, 80,000-seat roofed venue on the property he had purchased. He presented it in a pitch now known as the Inglewood Project. The rival Carson proposal came from the other two franchises competing for the right to occupy the LA market, Charters owner Dean Spanos and Raiders owner Mark Davis. If approved, the two ownership groups would build and share a $1.8 billion, 65,000-seat open-air stadium in Carson a city about 12 miles south of Los Angeles. By most estimates, at the early stages, Carson had managed to cobble together 18 votes, six shy of the 24 required for relocation. At this point, Kroenke and the Rams were still pushing to move alone to Inglewood, but they had only gathered about seven votes. Many owners thought Kroenke was simply trying to reach nine votes, stogieing the Carson proposal from reaching the necessary 24 votes and buying him time to work on a contingency plan. There was a lot of confliction amongst the majority of owners, as many silently acknowledged that Inglewood was a significantly better site, but many of them felt Kroenke was an outsider and they wanted to support Spanos. One of the biggest Spanos supporters was the now-disgraced Carolina Panthers owner Jerry Richardson, as he and many of the other owners felt that Spanos, a beloved owner who had spent over 10 years trying to build a new stadium in San Diego, deserved the market. 
This was the closest Carson ever came to having a football stadium built. The night before the infamous meeting, the league office sent out a mysterious proposal that would allow for either the Chargers or Raiders to share Inglewood with the Rams. It was a modified version of a resolution that Jerry Jones had submitted the previous weekend. Despite all the momentum the Carson proposal had built, the next morning at the owners' meeting in the Houston Weston, two of its biggest supporters would end up speaking out in a way that would only serve as fodder for the opposition. First, Michael Bidwill, president of the Cardinals and a Carson supporter, tried to appeal to their detractors in a way that, well, ended up coming across patronizing and insincere. He lamented the idea that the NFL exists just to make rich owners richer, idealistically preaching about how the owners needed to consider what would be best for the league. Enter the Dallas Cowboys renegade owner Jerry Jones. Never afraid of confrontation and fully cognizant of the power he wielded within the group, Jones challenged Bidwill. When you guys move the team from St. Louis to Phoenix, it wasn't about the money. In classic Jerry fashion, just as Bidwill was trying to answer, Jones smelled blood in the water and cut him off. You did it for the money. Shortly after, it was Disney chairman and CEO Bob Iger, who was overseeing the Carson proposal's turn to speak. He reportedly opened with a corny joke about how in his 42 years at ABC and Disney, he had paid more money to the NFL than anyone else, an attempt that was met with crickets. Iger proceeded to present a 20-minute slideshow before trying to close with another ill-fated joke. He uttered a spin-off of the famous Disney commercial that featured the Super Bowl MVP shouting, I'm going to Disney World. I hope I'm going to the NFL, Iger said. Again, deafening silence. What's the only thing worse than having your punchlines miss the mark by a country mile? Easy. Having Jerry Jones on the other side of the debate ready to torch you. Jones reportedly scoffed at the notion that Iger had paid them, saying, quote, he said he paid us. Last time I checked, that money is coming from Disney shareholders, not him, end quote. In that moment, the air in the room changed and it quickly became evident with Jones backing the shrewd crunky was going to get his way. All that was left to do was hold a vote. The owners first voted on whether to opt for a secret ballot, a scarcely used method some owners had quietly requested back in August. Now it was time for the sides to present their cases. Initially, there were four resolutions that would be considered for a vote. But Steve Bashotti, the Ravens' owner, argued that the proposals conflicted with one another. So the owners agreed to consider only two, which ultimately pitted an iteration of Jerry Jones' proposal against Carson. Shortly after the vote, the tallying from the secret ballot was revealed. The Inglewood Project won by a whopping 21-11 vote, which floored the Carson backers. Their backing of Spanos, the perennial little brother figure amongst the owners. Their goal of thwarting Kroenke and Jones' power play. Their dream of Carson being the new home of the Los Angeles NFL football was over. Even worse, the negotiation had left Spanos so exposed and he had two terrible options to proceed with. He could become a tenant to Kroenke and try to negotiate the terms of a broader Inglewood partnership or return to San Diego in shame. The following day, Roger Goodell and several representatives from the NFL ownership group held a press conference to release the official terms. The NFL owners tonight uh, approve the return of the Los Angeles Rams to the market, uh, starting with the 2016 season. The Rams had won the right to immediately relocate to Inglewood, and the bridesmaid Chargers had a year-long option to join them. If the Chargers didn't exercise the option, the Raiders would then have a year to join the Rams in Inglewood. If the two defeated franchises opted out, the league would give them $100 million extra to try and offset the cost of developing a new stadium in their current markets. Two decades of posturing hastily closed with a blitz to the finish. Football was coming back to LA. Obviously, the Los Angeles market is tempting, boasting approximately 18.5 million people compared to the 2.8 million people in the greater St. Louis area. But many people wondered why Kroenke was so hell-bent on getting out of St. Louis to build his $2.6 billion stadium, which, by the way, is more than twice the cost of the Jets and Giants' new facility in Jersey. Sure, things had gotten contentious with the taxpayers and the local governments, but they did offer $500 million to build a new stadium. In addition to the state funding, Kroenke also wouldn't have had to pay the $550 million relocation fee. A lot of it had to do with the location of the stadium. The new location of the stadium is going to be in Inglewood, California, just 13 miles outside of Los Angeles, which presented a special opportunity to build a spectacle like the Showtime Lakers had at the Staples Center. Not only was the location great, the ownership group now had the ability to line the stadium with the modern amenities that St. Louis had been so stingy about implementing. And although the few diehard St. Louis Rams fans you can still see prowling the Twitter streets may beg to differ, the Rams faithful simply did not support the team at a level that would have warranted them staying. According to the Sports Business Research Network, St. Louis is the third worst team in the NFL in game attendance. The St. Louis Rams made up 2.6% of the total NFL attendance to games. 
So to the people wondering why the Rams moved to Los Angeles, the real question is, what took so long? This was a no-brainer for the Rams. This was a no-brainer for the NFL. And this was a no-brainer for Los Angeles. The only parties who lost on this deal was Spanos and St. Louis, who, let's face it, hardly had the competency to run a small market franchise to begin with. At the end of the day, it is simple. The Rams moved to LA because it made financial sense, and their ambitious owner, Stan Kroenke, was ready to make the fourth time the charm for football in LA. If you're new here and you haven't subscribed yet, feel free to click that subscribe button down below. If you like the video, then like the video, we'd really appreciate it. And last but not least, don't forget to tune into TPS every single day for more cool videos.